Hello. On behalf of Quest Diagnostics and the FC Dallas organization, I'd like to welcome and thank everyone for joining today's webinar. My name is David Steinfeld, and I am the Director of Business Development for Sports Science and Human Performance at Blueprint for Athletes. Today, we will be hearing from Skylar Richards, the Director of Sports Science and Head Athletic Trainer for Major League Soccer's FC Dallas. He will be discussing the team's unique approach to assessing and reducing player injury risk by using biomarker technology and how their data helps define strategic intervention strategies. Skylar is an incredibly accomplished and talented individual, so let me share a brief background on him. Skylar is in his 10th season for Major League Soccer and currently works for FC Dallas. He is the head athletic trainer overseeing many departments, including athletic trainers, sports nutritionists, massage therapists, and chiropractors. Richards is also the director of sports science, where he is responsible for the data analysis for all of the teams ranging from under 12 academy to the pro level. In 2015, he organized various club partnerships to open the first U.S. professional recovery lab, integrating daily recovery prevention, integrated soft tissue mobilization, lactic acid dispersal, nutrition, and anti-inflammatory modalities. Schuyler graduated from the University of Ainsville with a Bachelor's of Applied Science in 2006 and his Master's from the University of Akron in Exercise Physiology. Richards is also an FMS specialist with over 18 publications to his name. As for the team, FC Dallas has had a tremendous success recently in the Major League Soccer, winning its first Supporters' Shield and second U.S. Open Cup in 2016. Richards has successfully used sports science data as a tool to focus on sports recovery strategies with the ultimate goal of maintaining player health and availability. Today's webinar objective is to focus on that process in greater detail. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Skylar Richards. David, thanks for the intro, and it's an honor to be able to do this on behalf of FC Dallas and with our great partner, Blueprint for Athletes. I'd like to really focus today on why biomarkers are important in my industry for professional sports and elite soccer uh, across the world. Professional soccer is unique in that we have the longest season in all the pro sports. We have 34 games over eight months. During that, it's very important for us to maintain a high availability rate for our team in terms of keeping all our athletes available for selection game by game. That average percentage of our squad that's available is how we judge ourselves at FC Dallas. During these last four seasons with FC Dallas, we've had the highest availability rate, which also translates into the lowest injury rate uh, in the league. And we're very proud of that, but we pride ourselves on being able to keep that availability rate high by looking proactively at the body and specifically body chemistry by looking at things in a preventative manner and keeping an eye on their body chemistry we can get insight into things that help us stay ahead of the injury curve this is why we have the mentality that we can't wait for injuries to happen or anything to go bad really 2017 was one of our best years to date for fc dallas in terms of player availability the chart on the slide demonstrates our availability rates to the season and as you can see, they change in our variable game to game. We strive to maintain above a 92% availability rate. That roughly translates to less than two guys out every game. This is very important as my job is to give my coach as many players to select from each week and make his job difficult by having too many players to pick from. We do this by looking at each player individually, their injury history, and their body chemistry individually to make sure that we're doing things in a customized fashion to make sure that players have what they need to be successful week in, week out, and also stay so optimal in their body's ability to perform that they never even wander down into the unavailable range. As you can see in our first year, we dip below this for quite some time in our second third of our season. However, after that, we steadily figured out different regimes and recovery schemes that helped us maintain the player's availability. We did this by changing things into a preventive recovery methodology and mindset within our club. It's important for me to explain more about that change in methodology and, and mentality into the recovery mindset. Injuries can't be prevented. In fact, we don't really want to prevent injuries or, i.e., break down the tissue at all sometimes. We want to break down tissue. It's important to realize that when exercising, breaking down tissue helps to build tissue stronger. Wolf's Law 
in fact, is taught to us in school and says the more stress you apply to a tissue and let it recover from that tissue, the stronger it will become. So therefore, our job is rather than to prevent injury, is to aid in the cycle of recovery from the natural tissue breakdown that should occur. The trick in this is to be able to measure that breakdown and understand how much breakdown you can allow before injury occurs. This is where technology in this day and age has really come to the forefront of my industry in allowing us to measure that breakdown and measure the physiology of the body to allow us to better predict where those lines are and avoid crossing those lines into the injury zone. Biomarker analysis, GPS, muscle thermography, diagnostic ultrasound are all tools that are used in this day and age. And it's on us as practitioners to make sure that one, we have a system in place to utilize these tools in the right way and a methodology that is taught to our athletes of what that information means and how it can make them to be better athletes. In this, we come to more of a triage system on figuring out what players are significant in terms of breakdown and deficiencies and what players aren't. By looking at the data in terms of triaging, we understand that some players need help sometimes and other players are okay to progress as, as they are. With biomarkers, we have the ability to look at things like creatine kinase, which is an overall indicator of stress, stress accumulation, stress acceleration, and the body's reaction to it. Through this, we're able to identify what players are routinely putting their bodies, their psychology, through consistent stress, because we know the body is reacting to that stress in ways that make high levels of creatine kinase. That really allows me to identify and target the individuals who are at more risk from overuse breakdown and overuse injuries because of that measure. So again, giving me an efficient way to figure out who I need to focus on, but more efficiently, who not to focus on, and therefore wasting my time on players who handle stress much more effectively through the body. Another really good use of the biomarkers that helps us triage our players is inflammation risk. We know that accumulation of inflammation in the body can set athletes up for injury. It can cause muscles to shut down and things generally not work to their optimum level. Through looking at different things that individually make athletes susceptible to inflammation, we can then identify and use this to accumulate their risk level throughout the season. Therefore, if we're going through a very high load of gain, of volume, and then they also have other biomarker indicators of inflammation on top of that, then that individual has that high risk. If they then also were in the significantly high CK bucket, then we know this individual is somebody we need to monitor daily to make sure that they're not breaking down. And again, more importantly, that other athletes aren't in this bucket, and so we can focus on the individuals who are at higher risk. And in this way, we really make the data actionable. And that's so important in this day and age of technology because as opposed to years past, it was harder to acquire data points, whereas now it's so easy to get so many data points so quickly that you end up with a bucket of data that you're trying to find patterns in, look for insights and things, and spend more time on an Excel spreadsheet than you are actually making change within your team. So addressing the actionability of these data points is actually our job in these roles. And then using those specific data points that are actionable to drive change down the road specifically things in the biomarkers that we believe are, are really actionable at FC Dallas are the nutrition deficiencies as well as the hormones. We talked a little bit about creatine kinase before uh, in that bucket as well, but looking at different hormone levels and seeing the implications of that individual's lifestyle and different habits they may have formed in their day-to-day -day routine 
that may affect their overall ability to perform. On the nutrition deficiency, those are things that are actionable because we can we can change dietary habits. And especially if there are deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, things like that, vitamin D, C complex, things like that, that can help them consistently perform on the field. If we see deficiencies there, those are things we can help to coach them, but also things we can do daily to supplement or to provide the team, provided meals for them that help them change that deficiency, come up at least to the average level of their teammates in those metrics, but also increase to an advanced level to their previous test. And that's where test retest in these biomarkers becomes very, very important to see that our change in our interventions are being very effective. So as we go on this, and I've talked a little bit about this on, on each slide, we're looking to individualize and identify the best means of improvement through these measures. The way we really do this is looking at the whole picture of the individual through our advanced physical protocols and not looking at just general population data, but, but athlete-specific, elite soccer-specific data, and then marrying up the biomarkers to the, to the system to look at the overall picture of the individual and come up with individualized interventions. They have a really good result and case study in this with our team captain. We found multiple nutritional deficiencies. We helped him to strategize and come up with realistic changes in his daily nutrition, post-practice nutrition supplementation, as well as his pre-game approach and strategy to performance. He felt more alert, more recovered, and more prepared for each game, as well as his numbers were drastically improved in the vitamin deficiency category, and we saw his hormone levels rise and plateau to something that we could maintain and were consistently satisfactory over time. We feel like this has helped to keep him available for 90% of the season following our, our first test last year, and we will continue to improve this, but really look for consistency in his approach to these vitamin deficiencies and continue to test. The difficult thing about biomarkers, the physiology exams and tests and measures are that the body is constantly changing. And so we have to focus on being able to change those changeable, define how we're going to do them and and really focus only in the individuals, again, who need significant change in areas that we can change. Again, change the changeables in the individuals that need it, and that makes it efficient. And when we stop trying to put out all the fires and put out the important fires and the ones we know we can make differences in and then teach that to our athletes, that those are the important metrics, the ones that they can control, we end up making them better athletes whether they end up with our club over the long term or not. And that's ultimately our goal here at FC Dallas, as we not only have our first team, but we also overlook nine full scholarship academy teams, where our model is to build the next great player, have them on our roster, and then see them succeed internationally. And so by teaching them these strategies and making them more aware of the important things in their body, and enabling them to get further testing down the road but know what they're looking for and how to change it, we feel like we've built better athletes mentally, physically, and we're very proud to look back and see the consistency of our athletes and their success over time. Thank you, Skylar. And thank you again to the entire FC Dallas organization for participating and assisting in biomarker data for today's webinar. If you have any questions for Skylar about today's topics, please feel free to email me directly at david.a.steinfeld at questdiagnostics.com. For anyone interested in learning more about Blueprint for Athletes or participating in our free trial testing offer for yourself, you can also email me directly at david.a.steinfeld at questdiagnostics.com. Thank you.